Today I'm going to be laser cutting some ABS that's here behind me into some squares then we're going to print on it for a customer but I'm going to be using my brand new 1.3 by 900 laser cabinet with 150 watts of power. The first thing I have to say is damn I really love the new shape of this it really makes it look new modern I love the fact that there's no handle on the outside so when I'm walking past I don't hit it you'd grab it so nice and easily this is really really easy to use and quite simple quite nice and sturdy the light is in the same place as always really nice where it is because that makes it very illuminated while you're busy with your work the first thing we need to do is level our bed to our material all right, now that we've got our ABS in our bed and exactly where we want it, the first thing we need to do is level our bed. So we're gonna head over to our control panel and now we're gonna to need to move our head to the middle so we can get the best accuracy out of our leveling. So we move our head over and there should do it. The next thing we need to do is grab our included steel ruler that comes with the machine, place it underneath our magnet which is going to be our distance measuring from there we head over to our control panel and we're going to need to push our focus button once we've done that we need to push enter to confirm now before I push enter I just want to let you know this is a new feature which I quite enjoy and the reason for it is sometimes on the older machines if you push that button by mistake it will auto level and if you do not have anything by that magnet such as stainless steel, which will pick it up, it will force the bed through the tip of your laser and magnet, which will eventually break something. So let's go ahead and we're gonna push enter. Now that it's picked it up, it's gonna take a few seconds, read the measurements and then change the height accordingly. And there we go. Now that it's height level adjusted, from here we can head over to our laptop and start our artwork. Okay, now we're at our program and I've already opened up our RDWorks, which is the program that we're gonna be using for our lasers to go forward. First thing we need to do is now draw our lines so that we can cut squares. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw my line on the left-hand side. Now what's cool about this is we can use our control button, as you can see, to make it go straight. So we'll go and put that line down the left hand side. I'm gonna go and change this line to a color we can actually see on the board. So let's just cycle through our colors. Maybe go purple. Now I want to make this thing 800 millimeters exactly. Now you have to remember, if you're gonna be using your drawing tool and your line tool, you must make sure if you're gonna change the length to unlock your lock there so that you have a consistent change what I mean by that is if you have this locked down and you go and change this to 800 it can't change it correctly because it's trying to change the orientation together as one proportional item so you need to change it so that it's unproportional so you make that lock unlock we're going to change it to 800 and there we go now we have got a correct measurement there now we just need to make sure it's centered to our bed. So first thing we're gonna do is go and center it in the middle of our page. And then we're gonna push it all the way to the left hand side. And I'm gonna use my arrow key just to bring it so that I can see it where it is exactly. All right, so now that we've centered it and moved our line over so that we've got a good centered line, we're gonna go ahead to our option on our left hand side which used to be called Array Copy on our TrueCut program, but now we're using RDWorks, it's now called Matrix Copy. Now this is a very handy tool if you are wanting to make one object multiple with the correct distance between each part. Now I need to make sure I've got 13 lines going across and I need it to be a hundred millimeters gap simply because I am cutting a square that is a hundred millimeters by a hundred millimeters. So, that is the best option for me. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna push OK. Now that I've got our 12 or 13 lines up there, we now need to draw our line going across. So let's get our line tool. We're going to make sure that we center it on that tip and you can see a little 
arrows or little symbols popped up with a square and four lines that means that my point is going to be in the right place it's going to be touching there so we're going to push our left click and we're going to drag it all the way to the other side and we're going to hold down control because we want a flat line and we're going to left click again now keep in mind as you can see that line's too big so now we need to go and change it to 1200 exactly make sure that we've unticked our proportional lock and as you can see, we're on point. And this is a little bit too over to the right. So move it over just a bit. Move it back. And there we have it. Now we've got a perfect line going across. So now we need to do the rest going down. So we go over to our ray tool. And now we need to repeat the process going down. So we're gonna need line lines and a hundred millimeter gap. And we're going to push OK. And there we have it, a grid of squares. Now that I've got my array of squares, as you can see there, now we need to adjust our power settings. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and select everything that's on the board that we're going to be cutting. From there, we're going to go and double click where it says laser cut on the right hand side. And we're going to make sure our layer is the layer that we've selected, is the purple one. Our output needs to be yes, simply because if your output is on no, that means nothing will happen. So you need to leave it on yes. From here, we're going to now look at our speed. So because we are cutting ABS, we have to keep in mind that ABS has a very nasty habit of rejoining itself, melting itself back together if there's too much heat and the laser is cutting too slow. So you want to try and keep a fast cutting speed with not too much power because you just want a beam to separate the plastic and not let it mesh back to itself. So normally I go for around 50, but because I am blessed with a 150 watts, I am able to go much higher than 100 speed. So for this exercise, I'm gonna go and set it up at 150 speed. Repeat number, we're gonna leave that as one because I only wanted to do one. We're gonna make sure it says cut and not scan. Yes, we want the blower to be on. If we don't have that on, we might have a fire. And then from there, I'm going to go as far as 40% power. And just going to change our power so that it's 40%. And now that I've done that, the settings on the right hand side will leave as is. And from there, we can then go and push OK. And now our settings have saved. From here, we can now download it to our laser cutter. Now you've got a various options of doing so, but today I'm going to be using the USB to USB simply because that is the easiest to do. And as you can see on the bottom right here, I've already got my USB auto already selected. So all I have to go and do is push download. Now that connects it automatically to my laser and we're going to put here squares. And we can then go and push OK. And there we go. Now it's downloaded. So that's the last thing we need to do on our program. So let's head over to our control panel to start this job. The first thing we need to do here before we go ahead is make sure our relevant items are on before we go ahead and start using the control panel. So we need to make sure that our motherboard switch is on, which is our control panel, our laser switch and our water chiller, just so that these three are on permanently before you go ahead and do any jobs and then our air pump and fan switch will put on just before we push our start button. So now that you've got that on, we can now actually use our control panel. From here, we need to go to file and we can see there's a whole bunch of items that are already here, but we want the first one's squares. So from there, we're gonna push enter and we can see our square set up here, clear as day. We can see our 150 millimeters of speed and 40% power. And we can check all of our information here. This here is our max power. Our max power is set to 99%. That you never fiddle with. You only fiddle with your power settings for the job itself, not the control panel. The one thing that you will need to change, and it's up to your discretion, is the speed of which you move your laser head around. Now you can do that by simply just pushing speed 
and then typing in the number you require. So in this instance, I actually want to move it to 250 and we push enter. Now, whenever you change a setting, it will remove the file that you were working on. All you have to do is go back to our file button, enter back into a file and then our picture and our load is back on here. Now, there is one more thing that you can do, which is very interesting and makes this a very nice machine to work with. You can change your settings of the job itself on this motherboard without having to touch your computer again. So unplug the cables, computer's gone. You still have the job here, but you notice that your power on speed is wrong and you still want to go ahead and change it. So what we have to do is go ahead and push enter while our job is still on the screen. So we push enter and you can see it's now highlighted our settings of our job. You're going to push enter again and now it brings up our control panel settings for the job itself. Now you can see that there's actually a color layer. So it's given a layer here. That is simply so that if you've got more than one layer here, you can change the layers separately without doing the entire thing at once. So from there, you can use your arrow button, type in the settings that you want, go ahead, change everything else. And when you're finished, you go ahead and push right to save your job. Now, I don't want to go ahead and change my settings. So I'm just going to merely push exit. I'm going to go back to file and enter to my job again and my settings are still as they were before. Now that we've got that down, we now need to move our laser head to the furthest left hand or right hand side, up to you depending on where you've put your origin, but in my case my origin is always going to be the right hand side for this new control panel. Always make sure you know which side is your origin, left or right, top hand corner, simply because when you're doing your frame you'll come up with an error code and you won't know what it's for unless you understand why it's giving you that code and simply because if i do frame now for instance and my laser is in the middle of the board i'll push my origin point and i push frame you'll see it comes with the x y slope over continue or cancel um, and now we're going to cancel because if we start it we're going to have a problem so we're going to cancel that and we're going to have to restart our job so we go back into file push enter and now we can align correctly. So just keep in mind where your origin point is before you go ahead and you push frame. Now, what I'm gonna do is use my arrow keys and move it to the corner that I respectfully want to start cutting. Keep in mind that you need to focus your red laser to where your actual beam is coming out of. So now that I've put it in the corner that I think it'll be fine, we can go ahead and push our origin on our motherboard. Now that we've pushed origin, we are telling the machine that it's supposed to start in that corner. If you have set origin to somewhere else, that means it'll start here, which means you'll end up cutting into your bed um, if it doesn't come up with an error code. So you want to make sure that you push origin first. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and push frame on our motherboard. And that is it. Now that we have aligned our laser to the point of origin we want to start this job, we're happy that the frame is within our material. We can now go ahead and push our other two options, which is our air pump and our fan for extractor. Now that I've done that, all we need to do is go ahead and push start.
All right, now that we've made the noise stop, we switched off our fan and air pump. We can now open up our lid and have a look at our ABS. And there we have it. We have almost a hundred perfectly cut squares for our customer. The only thing we need to do now is go and stick on our artwork, but for now we are done. I just want to leave a few things about this machine that I've, I've noticed while using it in this job. I really have to say that we, when you're purchasing a machine and you have to look at the fact that you want to either make this last for many years or you're going to be using high production and you're going to have to replace parts as often as you can because you're going to be using your power over a certain level. When I chose this machine, the reason why I chose it is simply because I want this machine for the next 10 years. And that being said, I also want a tube that's going to last me close to five years, if not more. So the only way of making sure that something like that's going to last long enough is if you go for a premium tube. Now, a lot of people say the premium tube doesn't last nearly as long as normal, vice versa. There are a lot of contradicting things about the premium tube, but in my opinion, this premium tube, which is 150 watts rated minimum, which actually can go a lot further than that, will last me about five years if I make sure my power consumption is below 70 for every job. That way I'll ensure that this tube is going to last me a lot longer than your normal 150 watt tube. So if you want to start a new business and you're looking for a laser, I highly recommend the new laser cabinets that come in various sizes from AM and the reason for that is simply design aspects, what you get for a machine, how it performs out of the box without configuring the settings too much this is an amazing machine to get i really love the fact this control panel is so easy to use it's just one of my favorites so far one last thing guys please make sure that you match your workload to the tube that you're going to be getting and what i mean by that is if you're going to be cutting through thick material and a lot of it on the daily you want to make sure you get a higher wattage tube and don't be stingy because getting an 80 watt versus 150 watt can mean years in the lifespan of your tube. So be vigilant, make sure that you make that choice correctly. But as for me, this is my favorite laser today. For more information on this beautiful machine, call sales at 060 600 6000 and get all the information you need. And thanks for watching.